welcome to Copenhagen. We have come to the Danish capital for a big day out. So let's start the show. Most of our big days out begin at a railway station and it's no different here. This is Copenhagen Central. Let's take a look inside. This is quite a grand building, inside and out. And in some ways, it reminds me of London Paddington because you've got that sort of long expanse here. And at this particular area at Paddington, you would be heading down to platforms 12 to 14. Seems quite similar. This is our second time in Copenhagen. We came, I would say, what, about 16 years ago, and it was absolutely freezing at that time. We came, like, right after New Year. We did. And I can remember coming into the station because it was one of the few places that was actually... Warm. Warm and fully open at the time. So these are the ticket machines, and you can buy tickets for virtually anywhere here. Okay, and so there's various that. languages, so you can use English. And let's say, for example, you wanted to travel from Copenhagen Central to the airport. Then you can just put the information in here, so, so it's quite easy to use. So why don't we just go to Odense? I don't know where that is. Oh, we're not going to the airport then? Okay. Well, this was the default. Yeah, and then it gives all the uh, amounts in Danish crowns. If you wanted to buy tickets for the hop on hop off bus, you could get them here and various other tours. But I'm interested to see what this on the tube is. It says it's virtual voyaging. The tube, what do you think this is, Paul? Uh, I think it's kind of like, it's kind of like a tourist thing where you take photos. Oh, I see, so in various different scenarios and disguises maybe i don't oh, know Oh, look there's me that's one scene that you really don't want to see well when you just step outside the station immediately across the road are the famous tivoli gardens which even more famously were closed when we came on that very wintry occasion many years ago there's like a little sort of a train attraction up there um where that kind of mountain is and there's quite a long line for people to get in. But I thought that you could just go into the gardens themselves for free because uh -huh. this is the Tivoli Fun Fair. So I'm not really in the mood for having to pay to go in because I don't really want to do fun fair activities. I just wanted to go into the park. So we'll need to take a little look around and see if there's another entrance. We might have to go round the park. Look, it says over here that entrance is 160 and you say that's 18 pounds just to get in. Do you not believe me? So, I do believe you. Mm. 1837. Just to go into the garden. I don't really want to pay that. No. But I'm thinking, is there... Is there like some cheaper no, way to do this? So. so either you pay the full amount or you don't get in. Oh. I'm sorry, but I don't think we're going in. Well, we've walked to the back of the gardens now, so there really is no way you can get in for free. And I'm sorry, but 18 pounds just to walk in is a bit of a rip off for me because that doesn't even include rides. Not that I wanted to do those, but if you did, it was like an astronomical amount. I would say it would be a better idea for them to charge perhaps a more nominal, reasonable amount for people who just wanted to have a walk around in the park. Maybe that's something Tivoli needs to think about. We have come back to Central Station and walked the whole way through at this time and out to the back. And that's where you will find the Metro Station. And we are going to take it to the Royal Palace at Ameliaborg. 
All right, Paul, we found the ticket machines. Oh, there's a map here. That's quite good. So where are we then? The Central Station. Mm. Ah, Copenhagen Central. And Do we, we want to get one? to Kongens Nytorv. Well, you can take the one, but you can also take um, the number two line, which is going up here somewhere. Anyway. Oh, look. Oh, this is very clever. Actually, this, this shows it properly now. Okay. So here we are. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to see the map. Well, we couldn't get the map back up on the screen. You had to touch it. I had to touch it. But you can touch this one. <laughs> because it's a permanent one. So what I was trying to say was that we are here at Copenhagen Central and you can take this kind of circle line, which is the number one, the red one, I think that is. And we want to get to Kongens Nytorv, or you could take the blue one and it stops there as well. And we would take it in the direction of Oriental. So that might be the easier one because we'd have to make sure that we were traveling anti-clockwise here. Whereas, whereas the red one's kind of like the circle one. Yeah, so you'd have to travel anti-clockwise. So you don't want to go the wrong way. Whereas at least if you go on the blue one, you know that as long as you're heading to that stop, um, then you can get off here. But another thing is, are we going to be on the same platform as the other one? Or, or it might be like a different platform. Well, it doesn't really matter because this is the stop and it seems to be quite a central stop because this is where the Royal Palace is, you see. So that's why all the lines interconnect here. In fact, they all do, yes. So we need to get a ticket, a single ticket that covers two zones. And I guess that makes sense because... That's another zone? I think this is all zone one, but there is no single zone one. Oh, a city map, that's handy. Let's pick that up as well. Just in case. Yep. Okay. So we'll get our tickets now. We might not be able to film this because there is a staff member there. So the guy helped us with the tickets. It was very easy. It was 48 crowns. How much is that, Paul? I don't know. Oh, God. That's quite a lot, isn't it? I don't know. We'll have to work it out. But anyway, we're just going a few stops to get off at the Royal Palace. And it's a single and it has to cover at least two zones. So there we go. The M4 over this side here goes to Orientage or Oriental as I like to call it. And that is in just three minutes. So it's not too long to wait at all. They're very small trains, aren't they, Paul? I think they're like, what, two carriages or three? It's not long at all, but you can see the platform tiny. is tiny. I wonder what it would be like in rush hour. So it's called the City Ringin, and I guess if you're at this side, then it must go that yeah. direction. So we probably could have taken one that was there, but let's just take this nice blue one. And the good thing about the signage it also says that it gives it in half minutes as well so it says one minute now it says half a minute i hear something oh here it comes oh it's driverless as well look oh we can drive it we're going to be able to drive it Oh, how exciting, Paul. How exciting we're going to be able to drive the train. Look, it's even got the controls.
example, we saw the control panel at the front, and very soon, in fact, maybe even now on the DLR in London, there will also be a control panel so you can drive the train yourself, or at least pretend to. Of course, even up until that point, you could sit at the front and have a go. They are quite spacious trains, but as I say, at rush hour, you could probably imagine how full they get. What did you think of that? It was quite good and it was really, really smooth. Very, very smooth ride. Great to get the front seat. And I guess we can count the number of carriages now when it goes off. There's the first one, the second one, third, oh, three. So it's three tiny carriages. Don't get caught spying on someone's YouTube channel. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. So we've come out on Strogat, which is the main shopping, main shopping street. street. And the Royal Palace should be around here somewhere. I would imagine that it was somewhere near there. Somewhere there. Perhaps we need to go to the toilet first, because I think I need to sit on the throne myself. <laughs> We've got a fabulous park here. Look at those beautiful blooms. Unfortunately, we can't get in. There's barriers the whole way around. And there's no entrance to the actual park itself. I guess that's because they want to keep it all nicely preserved. But it is lovely to look at. And there is a memorial to maybe one of the former kings, who knows, in the center. That's a very interesting looking kiosk behind you. And you say it's part of the well, espresso house? Maybe Coffee not. chain? Maybe not, but it looks like that's where people order their... Oh yeah, drink. I think it is it is like a coffee shop type place, but it's not part of the espresso house, which but I think... I do have a question. Yeah. Where, the, where, where do they go to the toilets? Well, they don't. That's the uh. thing. <laughs> so that's why we're not going to that one. Let's go to the espresso house. If you fancy doing a bus tour, there is the hop on hop off, the city sightseeing official Copenhagen tour. But I don't think we're doing that today. They have like some more of those places near the harbour. Where are we, Paul? We are in a area of Copenhagen called Nyhof. It's very busy. Look at all the people around here. And it's because there are boat tours and this is the canal system. Is that right? Yeah. And I think that there's also like an open market in those stalls over here. Oh, that's no, why it's no, so no. busy. No, it's not open market. It's like where all those restaurants are allowing their food stalls customers to eat out. oh right so it's like seating area for like the customers for the restaurants and we've made the mistake of coming on a saturday of course and that is why it is extremely busy here but there are people lined up to go on these copenhagen canal tours well we're not going to do that but i think we can take a little walk along let's the canal take a, let's take a stroll along the canal bit going out towards the, the sea, maybe? I would go that side because there's fewer people. That's where all the restaurants are, as you said.
These are very flat boats. Oh look, everyone's cheering. Is that because they have arrived alive? Lots of bicycles. You could go on a canal rundfart. Might be a bit smelly on board. This is the quieter side of the canal <laughs> and yet there are hundreds of people but they're all waiting to go on these boat tours and as I said the next one goes at one o'clock which is coming up pretty soon while we're here. I think it is going to peter out a little bit the further along we go but you were saying Paul that you can remember the last time we were here all those many years ago all the pastel yeah. coloured buildings. I kind of remember it but yeah. It's sort of kind of all faded now, <laughs> in my memory. I think that this was like one of the most distinguishing aspects along this river. I think we might have just passed it briefly, but then we did take it in, but it was so cold. Yes, I think that is what the problem was. It was absolutely freezing. It was about something like minus 10 yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this place such a tourist trap? Well, it really is. And you know, I don't really like being amongst crowds of people. And it's a little overwhelming. It is overwhelming. And also along the canal side, I don't yeah. really want to be walking too close to the edge because there's no barriers and it's a sheer drop into the water. And I can't swim. We don't swim. swim. Oh, you can't swim either. Yeah. <laughs> so we could end up drowning in Copenhagen. <laughs> no. Well, we've got a gift shop here, and look, is that the king? Well, he's nodding, so it must be affirmative. And I saw someone over here too, who's this? Drummer boy. Ah, right. Oh, I think he might be something to do with the royal guards, perhaps, because he is standing next to the castle. There's a lot of bicycles around as well, and you can hire them. This is called Donkey Republic. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know how you do it. Each one has got a name. Look, oh, it's named after donkeys. Look, this one's called Bright. This one's called Cupcake and Antelope. How funny. I've seen quite a lot of boys in Copenhagen. What do you see over there, Paul? The bridge. That's two giant cones you've got, Paul. Yeah, they are. Oh, look, we could sit here on this bench. It's just yes. ready for us. So is one for me or the <laughs> both for you? Yeah, one's for you. All oh, right. So this is soft scoop. Very nice. The cone doesn't seem that stable, so I'm going to have to eat this really quick. This was seven pounds. No, like seven pounds for each one. What? Oh, you are, oh, you're kidding. Well, I think we're not going to be able to have lunch now, Paul. It's not as good as Morelli's. Mm -mm. Nope. You did eat them both in the end. You had to finish mine. It was far too much. You should have gotten a big one. I didn't know it was going to be that big. So why did you tell me to get two big ones? Well, you got the big one, so I thought, well, I should have the big one as well. Paul, look what I have discovered now. What? Up there, look. Cafe bro. Does that make you feel like home? No. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome to Ameliaborg. This is the royal palace and they must be in because the flag is flying at full mast. You know what I find fascinating? That on the top of these buildings, like right in the front, there's like the crest on top. So I've noticed it over there, over there, over there, and the one also behind us as well. I don't think you want to mess with these guys. These are the Royal Guards. What is that spectacular building in front of us, Paul? You said it looks like a cathedral. It does look a bit like St. Paul's, actually. And there was a red tour bus outside. It almost looked like a London bus. Uh, a trusty phone. What does it say? Frederick's Kirk. Kirk? Well, that's a church. Yeah. We've been used to seeing a lot of yellow post boxes around Europe, but this time in Denmark, they are red, just like in the UK. And I guess it's quite appropriate that these two are situated very close to the Royal Palace. Oh look, it's our YouTube channel. So for those of you that have subscribed already, hit the subscribe button right here. And for those of you that want to leave a comment or like it, do that as well. Thanks for watching. Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen. Friendly old girl of a town. Neath her tavern light, on this merry night, let us clink and drink one down. To wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen. Salty old queen of the sea. Once I sailed away, but I'm home today, singing Copenhagen. Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen for me. Through the harbour and up to the quay. And there she stands waiting for me. With a welcome so warm and so gay. Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen. Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen. Friendly old girl of a town. Look, Paul, I found one of your former presidents over here. Oh. Franklin you? D. Roosevelt. When was so he, he was, well, he must have visited, but he was president from 1933 to 1945, it says. Oh. Is he the only president who has served three terms? Yes. <laughs> this is your American history coming into uh, recollection here. You're sure about that? So there's been no president that served broken terms, but three of them. No. Do you think it'll ever happen again? They'd have to change the constitution, is that right? Uh huh. Ah, uh, Paul, even more bikes here, look at this. Quite an abundance. So we are now on the main Rue Paul of <laughs> Copenhagen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Do you get what I meant there? Roots. No, no, the main drag. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and this is Strogat. And it's the main shopping street, basically. And after that ice cream, we are in the mood for something savory now. And we did take a look at McDonald's, but it was absolutely packed out. It was crazy. I'm in the mood for fries, you see. This is an expensive brand, Zadeg Voltaire. Yes. And look what we've got over here. We've got the Guinness World Records Museum. But is it the one in... Oh, cool. And is that the world's tallest ever man there? <laughs> From the world's tallest man to the world's shortest woman. I only know that because it says it here. Pauline Munsters, Princess Pauline.
I always say that if in doubt for lunch, find the nearest department store. And just off the main shopping street, we found Magasin behind us, and it did come up trumps. I hear chanting. Is that our friend Harry Styles? Oh no, it's Hari Krishna, right? <laughs> Here he comes. Illuminate me on what you found now, Paul. So I believe that Illum is a department store because it has various brands such as Dior, Boucher, Muji, Levi's, I think. And Tiffany. Yeah, it looks like they have the whole gamut of brands. We could go there for breakfast. <laughs> Now, Paul, next on the agenda, it's time for happy hour. And we've discovered a couple of bars that start happy hour really early at three o'clock. And it's just gone half past three now. So the first one is off this main shopping street. But you say that there's still a bit of a walk. Yes. How much of a walk is it? I am getting thirsty. Well, better get walking then. Yeah. Well, we do have the Dubliner over there, but I'm not in the mood for an Irish drink. Today, I know, it's very unlike me. Oh my God. This is reckoned to be one of the busiest, if not the busiest, shopping street in all of Europe. Even and Oxford you... Street isn't as bad. No, exactly. And this is completely pedestrianized as well. And it's absolutely heaving. So we've come to Central Hornet, is that right? Don't correct it on the pronunciation, please, <laughs> because we'll butcher it for sure. Maybe they're all busy bees in there. This bar claims to be the world's oldest gay bar. Really? Now, how come I've never heard of it then? <laughs> well, maybe I'm <laughs> making this up. Well, we'll just have to go in and find out what it's like. Maybe it's the world's most expensive gay bar. Yeah, perhaps. Well, I'm afraid it's a no for me because <laughs> they're smoking in there. No, I don't know. Is smoking still allowed? in bars in Denmark. I thought, I, I, I thought it was outlawed. So I'm afraid I can't sit in a smoky bar because, no. well, it's been 20 years since I've gone home with a very smoky shirt. Well, let's hope we have better luck with this one. I hope so. It's called Jailhouse CPH Restaurant and Bar and it's got a Jail. prison theme, this, a jail theme. So we're not quite sure if we're going to be put immediately into custody and handcuffs as soon as we go in. In fact, we have to go down. Well, this wasn't too bad in here, but there is only one problem. They do still allow smoking in bars in Denmark. I don't know if it's across the board, but it is certainly allowed. And I don't want my clothes to smell, so we just stay for the one.
Well, we were on our way back to the station when we stumbled across Oscar's <laughs> Bar and Cafe, which was actually on my list of places. And we thought, OK, well, let's just give it a go. And to my delight, it was no smoking, which was fantastic. And when we were in there, I thought, I wonder what is the smoking policy? You did your research. I did my research and I looked it up. So according to Visit Copenhagen, Denmark has a smoking ban in all public indoor areas along with most other Western European countries. In Copenhagen, smoking is forbidden in public buildings and private businesses including restaurants, shops, transport, entertainment venues and workplaces. The only exception from the ban is for establishments with an area less than 40 square meters that do not serve mm. fresh food. So that means that smoking is still allowed in small pubs. Wow, we had a fabulous time here in Copenhagen. And look, the pride flag is flying right behind us. And if you are flying the flag for our channel, then perhaps you would like to give us a like, a comment, or especially a subscribe. And for those of you that are feeling extra generous, why not purchase us a cup of coffee? Because Marcus does love coffee and so do I. And it will keep me awake so as I can edit all these episodes. Ah, the bells have tolled. It must be the end of the episode. Aww. Yes, there's a link in the description for the coffee. And we will see you next time. So from Denmark, goodbye. Bye-bye.